That's cool. Hello again, this is Press Any Button, and here we are in our rail shooter series with a new part. Today we're going to be implementing a little bit of feedback for our player when they take damage, and that's pretty much it. We're going to be continuing on with working with health scripts and things like that. So you're going to see that we do a little bit of setup for all of that good stuff. But this is going to be a very simple tutorial and what we're going to achieve is exactly as you've seen in the demonstration. We're going to have a flash on the screen and we're going to have an effect come out of the screen to notify our player that they've been hit. What you find with a lot of rail shooters is that you don't take too much damage, you don't get too many chances to take damage. One example that I'm using for this project is Ghost Squad. In that game, what tends to happen is you'll get fired at by a few enemies and sometimes they'll get sort of a critical shot off on you. In which case they'll have a little marker to signify, hey this guy is actually dangerous and he's going to take health from you. Whereas all the other enemies just have Stormtrooper health and you can just sort of blast through them. And the only thing that they do to inconvenience you is just use up your time. Alright, so let's jump into this and figure out how we're going to implement this. So the first thing that we need is a UI canvas. This is going to hold our image uh, that is going to overlay over our screen when we get hit. So that flash image. To do this, you're going to right click, go to UI canvas and you can see that I have a canvas here and then once you've got your canvas there you're gonna want to right click on it again and then go to UI and find image. Once you've created an image toggle the 2D button over here in your gizmos select your canvas hit F to get a proper view of it uh, and then it'll show you the dimensions of your image. This is super easy what you're going to do is you're just going to resize the image um, so that it fills up the entire view of the camera and this is done by just messing around with these little tabs up here and there and once you've done that what you'll then do is go to the color for your image and change the alpha to zero because we don't want our image to be active all the time we only want it to be active for a moment then you can switch back to 3d and if you really want to get back to your main camera just do the same select it hit f and that kind of puts everything into perspective again under our main camera we of course have our gun object and you can see in my inspector here I have a player health script so to do that simply new script and then you'll call yours player health just like that and then hit create and add now let's turn to Visual Studio to see what this player script actually does okay let's get an overview of this player script so we have a public integer, which is our starting health. So we're always going to start at 100 and we have a public int, which is our current health. And that hasn't been defined because later we will make our starting health to equal our current health. We don't have to worry too much about the figure here because it's just kind of a placeholder. We can manipulate this in the inspector and this we don't actually want to change in the inspector. We got a reference to that image that we set up and that image is called damage image. Now, because we're working with a UI component, we want to reference that in our script. So we have to also type in using unity engine.ui. Otherwise, a lot of stuff is gonna go wrong for us and it's gonna be a massive headache. Then we've got a public float, that is our flash speed. That is the speed at which our screen will flash and fade away and then we have flash color and as I said this is where we get to decide what color we want now the color is actually set to a deep red right now and we get to change that in the inspector just as we get to change these integers because it's a public 
finally at the top here we have a bull which is damaged and I've set damaged to equals false. On void awake we want to get our current health to equal our starting health so that when the game starts our current health is 100. When we have enemies chip away at that health of course it's going to go down but because it's in the awake function it won't return to 100. If we take 20 damage our current health is going to be at 80 and it'll just keep going down unless we get health upgrades and stuff. And then in void update we say if damage equals true um, then the image color is going to flash. So image.color equals flash color and this is sort of the UI bit that would go wrong if we hadn't have put using unity engine.ui. So if you're finding that that is an issue, that Unity is not recognizing your use of dot color here, and you wanna go back to the top and just change that. And then we have else, and we're gonna do a color lerp, which is kind of like a transition. So it's going to slowly transition back to how it was before. And that is a clear screen, the alpha set at zero on a white image. So to summarize, we get hit, flashes the color and then our color starts to fade away and this is really crucial that we put damaged equals false otherwise our color won't fade away it'll stay consistent so this color loop controls the fading and this actually makes sure that it fades in the first place and then we have public void take damage int amount this is really just a placeholder for what we're going to do in the future with the damage that we take we're not going to be using sliders or any ui components that look like health bars because i figured that's getting a bit boring now um, so we're going to figure out some fun solutions to showing our player how their health is doing okay so we return back to unity and we can see that all of those properties are in the inspector so just as i said current health is zero so where it says damage image, you're going to want to go to that UI component under your canvas and you'll drag that in and then flash speed, set it to one. That's pretty good. And then, um, but I'll set it to five just in case you want to see that. And then we have flash color and this is where you get to just sort of mess around with it. So you can have the alpha quite low. I don't have it as being opaque. Otherwise it will blind the player for a little bit and who knows, they might get shot in that time. And if you were running an arcade machine and your game played like that, oh, you would have people vandalize it left, right, right, and left is my assumption. So we want the alpha to be somewhere around the 60s, 70s, 80s, just enough that you can actually still see through and that the damage doesn't take away from the gameplay. So I've set mine to blue just because I like that color. And the final thing we want to do is add component. And then we're going to go call and get a box collider, not box collider 2D, just a box collider. Once you've got that box collider, it's going to appear right on top of your thing. So if I zoom in here, you can see that box collider is on my empty game object, which in turn is wrapping around the main camera. I'm gonna set that to is trigger so that it doesn't have any chance of colliding with anything. And we can leave our gun at that. So we've established that these cubes are our enemy game objects. So we're gonna use them as such and give them some actions to do. So what's an enemy meant to do? They're meant to shoot back at us because we're shooting at them. So we have a script here which deals with that. As you have it, you should be good to go just to hit add component and add a new script. I'll see you guys in Visual Studio. Right, Visual Studio time. So the method we're gonna be using today is we're gonna be using some raycasts and they're going to be firing at a particular fire rate. It's very similar to other things that we would have done in the past. The only difference is that we're actually using Raycast as this is something new that we should familiarize ourselves with because it can be very versatile, very useful for us in the future. 
Okay, so we have a public float and that is fire range. Going back to our ray cast, the fire range is the distance that our ray will travel. So that straight line that beams out of our enemy is going to travel by a certain distance, which we dictate. And then we got a public game object and that's called scatter. If you remember from the last part, scatter really refers to our particle effect. So we added a particle effect on the screen, a little bit of red splatter or hip sparks if you want coming out of our character like it's power rangers episode just so we know that we've been hit and then we got public game object attacking object so that's going to be for the reference of where our ray is coming from and then we've got a public transform that is our player target that'll reference their location because we're going to be using transform.lookat to tell our enemies where to aim we got a public game object again, which is player object. This helps us to set up the reference to the player health script, which we'll be manipulating and using in a later part. Public float, fire rate. Got a private float, which is next fire. That works hand in hand with our fire rate to make sure that we're not, you know, just shooting really quick shots at our player. We wanna be able to separate these. So from our view as a developer, we can figure out how much time we need for the fading effect and if it's actually working properly and then it helps us in the future to space out the shots for our enemies we have player health so that's a reference to the player health script which we've just created and then we've got a public integer which is attack damage and that's of course going to be the damage that's chipped away from our player when they get hit for now, we're just going to be using debug logs to let us know if we've been hit and if the ray is working properly. So on Void Awake, I have a reference to the player health script. So P underscore health. So after that equals player game object dot get component. And then we're going to reference that player health script. If you don't know how you're meant to reference that properly, what you've got to do is go to your player health script, or whatever you called it, and you're going to take this little title here. You're gonna put it there, call it whatever you want here. Make sure that whatever you've called it here is what you call it here in void awake equals play object get component. And then you paste that little title again and finish it off with the proper brackets and everything. Then we got void update and we're gonna use transform.lookat. Transform.lookat has the game object face our player so the camera and that's really good because we want this ray to actually hit our character so this is just to help them aim no matter where they are on the screen they'll be able to aim for us and then we've got an umbrella of time.dime and next fire and that hangs over all of this that you see that handles the ray cast so if you just add this line open some brackets add this line and then go into ray cast hit we make an if statement for the ray and so that ray is going to come out at a certain range and if it is intercepted by another game object then we are going to announce in the debug log that it did hit we're going to do player health take damage and we're going to do that by the amount of attack damage that we have that's not active yet but that's just good to know and we'll recap that in the future and then we've got game object hurt spark we're going to instantiate our scatter which is going to be our hit spark which we're going to add from the inspector because it's a public game object so we'll instantiate that and then we'll destroy it at a certain time and where will it be instantiated? It'll be at the point of contact with the ray. So the point of interception. And it'll be a rotation that faces outwards from the face of our player game object. And because we have a box collider with a flat surface, that spark is going to come outwards from our screen. And then we destroy that spark after one second. So we I've set this up so that it can be referenced to destroy it later and then else we just say did not hit 
but the chances of that happening are very low. This is the point at which we can save our script and return to Unity. Now let's set up the script on our enemy. So we have all of these little doohickeys and your fire range is probably going to be set to zero because we didn't prepare a float for it in our script. So change that to 100 or whatever you found is appropriate for the project that you're working on to get the right distance on that. And then we've got a place for scatter. That's a hurt spark. We talked about particle effect before. I'm going to give you a brief overview of what I've done. The only thing that I've really changed about this is the same one that we created in the last part. So I changed up the color a little bit. I messed around with the slider to get a deep red that I thought would be good. And then if we go to emission right here, I increased the count on the emissions and I changed the radius of the cone. So the shape right now for this emission is a cone. I changed the radius so that it would be a bit more narrow so that we would be able to see the, more of the sparks that are flying across our screen. Everything else I've left the same from last time and we'll go back to that enemy in the inspector and we'll drag that hurt spark in there. And then we have our attacking object. So this is where you drag your actual enemy in. And then you have your player target. So that is the gun. We'll drop our player object in here. And this we have here so that we have a route to reference our player health script, which is attached to this game object. So it's searching through this game object to use that player health, which we've made references to. So things will go wrong if we don't put that in there. Fire rate, I've set that to five for demonstration's sake and the attack damage I've set to one. But again, we haven't really set that up. Okay. At this point, you should be able to play your game. So let's have a look and see how things play out. Okay, so you can see immediately my screen flashes up when I get hit. I'm going to move my cube up. You can still see that able to shoot at me, maybe move it to the sides. So they can shoot at me from any angle. Now the reason why we allow them to be so accurate is, as I said, we don't really get hit too often in these kinds of games. One thing that I've noticed is you have to let an enemy be on screen for a long time for them to actually hit you. If you have enemies pop up with the ability to hit our player immediately, uh, you won't be able to make the game exciting because they'll be having a panic attack like I got to take out five enemies at once and if I don't they're going to shoot me I only got three hits that I can take and this game's just eating my coins so if you were playing an arcade again so that is all we got for today went over our reasoning for design choices we made a spark come out of our screen we got a bit of a flash which fades away one thing I'm going to do is actually decrease the rate of our fade away. So the less the number, the slower the fade. And so you can see that fades away quite nicely. And I think I'll leave it at that. Guys, another press any button tutorial. Hope you continue getting the chance to learn some new and nifty things from this channel and as always if you can support the channel leave a like leave a comment subscribe all those things they'll be much appreciated but until next time press on and keep creating